In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up and render exposure effects from XParticles 4 using Cycles 4D. Then we'll have a look at how to export the data as VBD data and use that to render in Redshift and Octane. Let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple simulation. We're going to use a sphere as our source object. So we're going to get a sphere, scale it down. We're going to right click and choose XParticles tags, XP library, Explosure effects and explosure effects source. We now have a source. This can be our this is our burning source. Next thing we need is an explosure object. So let's get explosure effects. And we'll drop our sphere down in the scene. Then if we hit play, we have our simulation. I'm going to change a couple of parameters. I'm going to go to the source object tag. And I'm going to turn off the solid option, which means it's going to use the surface. So if we push play now, you'll see it's using the surface of the sphere rather than the volume. Okay, we're going to leave everything else like that. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to look at cycles. So we're going to change our viewport to cycles. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to add a Cycles 4D light so that we can light the smoke. The flame will be emissive, so it will light the scene already, but smoke is not an emissive material, so it won't light up. So we've got a light in the scene. So what we want to do is we want to build a material. So we're going to go to the Cycles 4D menu. We're going to go to Volume, and we can either use an Absorption or a Scatter. We're going to use both of those nodes, so let's just get an Absorption set up which creates a, an absorption node and an output. So we're going to use the... We're going to set up the smoke first. So smoke uses volume absorption and volume scatter. So let's get a scatter node in there. So volume scatter. And we want to add those together. So we're going to use an add node. pipe that into the volume output and then using F on your keyboard connect those two. Next thing we need to do is we need to put some information into these and the information we want is the smoke information from EFX. To do that we need a point density node so we're going to type in point and get the point density node. With that selected it's going to ask us for an object and the object we want to point to is exposure effects so simply select exposure effects we can also put the material on our exposure effects object and you can see it's created a volume but we want the smoke so we're going to get our point density texture and the color channel we want is the EFX smoke channel we're going to pipe that density into the density of both the volume absorption and the volume scatter. Now we're not going to see anything. We need to multiply this. So we need a math node. We're going to get a math node. Put that in. And then from that we're going to put that through into the density of both of these channels. I'm going to set this to multiply and in the point density we're going to turn off normalize and now you can see we're starting to see a little bit of the smoke let's increase the strength of our light to help see that a bit better so the density of this smoke is now controlled purely with the math multiply node so if you can increase this you'll have denser, thicker smoke. We can also control the color from the color using a ramp. So let's create a color ramp. And we'll put that into the color channel 
and color into both of the color channels of the volume absorption and scatter nodes. And this will give you a little bit of control with the color gradient over how the ramp draws. So the last thing we want to look at then is the fire. And the way to get the fire is to use an emissive node. But we need to get the information. So again, we're going to use our point density as texture. And you can simply control drag to get a copy of this. And we're going to change it from smoke to burn. So we're talking to talking to the burn channel. And so we need a math again. So we're going to get a math node and point the color into the multiply channel in through an emissive. So we get an emission shader and pipe that into the strength. We need another add shader so we can control drag to pipe that in and then pipe this through. We're going to need to increase our strength here, so let's try 100. And you can see now we're getting our fire, but it doesn't look like fire. So we can do a couple of things. We can either use a color ramp. Let's put the density into there and see if that helps. We can use the, either use a color ramp or a black body. So we're going to try black body, see how that looks. So we get a black body put that in and then pipe that into the color and we can see we're now getting some actual fire rendering into the smoke so we can turn this down because this is too strong so let's try 50 that's too strong let's go to 10 Not too bad. It's getting some nice color in there. And again, you can change the brightness. Or you can change the temperature of your fire as well using the black body to get the more realistic looking material. So using cycles and the nodes, we have full control over all the channels coming out of exposure effects to give you exactly the type of look you want for your smoke and fire. But this is the basic setup. Point density for the smoke and fire, piping through volume absorption and scatter, and then an emission material with the black body to get the fire. So now that we've got that happening, let's have a look at how to use it in other render engines. We're going to go back to our standard display, select exposure, and we want to export this as a VBD. So we're going to go to X Particles, Other Objects, XP Cache, and with the XP Cache, we're going to select a folder, which is now going to be where our VBD data gets cached to. With the effects, option we're going to change the EFX format from X particles to open VVD and then we're going to go into the inclusion tab we're going to drop down the EFX menu and we're going to include temperature velocity and color which also adds to smoke and fire and that'll give you all the channels if you want UVs as well you can select that that'll give you all the channels you need in any other render engine for rendering the source material now we can build this. And what that has done is also cache the simulation, but it's also written out a bunch of exposure effects VBD files, which can be loaded into any other engine that can support VBD data. So in Octane, we're going to go to the Octane menu and we're going to load the Live Viewer.
the live viewer open we can then go to the objects menu and choose Octane VBD volume. This gives us a volume container which we can load our file into. Let's load our VBD file and then we have to change a few settings. First thing we need to do is we need to work out how many digits are within the exported data. As you can see you can count the numbers with the zeros and one leading to the dot VBD which is six so we're going to put six into the digits and then we're going to use the end which is the amount of frames so we're going to set this to 90. You can see by the grid mapping that absorption is set to density and we want to set scattering to density and emission to fuel. These are the channels that come in, come in with the data. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to load it into the live viewer go up some frames and then we're going to add a light to the scene. So we'll go to the VBD to the Octane menu and choose Octane Area Light. Let's move this out and you can see there's the EFX smoke is already set up within your scene and it plays with the scrubbing. So to take it further you can go into the VBD volume Change, look at the medium tab and add some fire by clicking the fire button and you'll get your fire channel there. You can open up the mediums to have full control over the emission colors and the medium volume and the smoke colors. Let's look at Redshift. We're going to load the Redshift render view and we're going to get a objects Redshift volume object which is where we add the VBD data. Open that and you can see the information, the channels are already in there, density, fuel and heat. We need to go to the I'm going to go to the display, change the preview to points and set the minimum maximum points to 100 go to the animation channel set the mode to simple and detect frames and that gives us all our frames from the VBD data let's add a redshift area light go to the volume on your area light and set the contribution scale to 1 otherwise you won't see any smoke. So let's add a redshift material and we choose a volume material put that onto the volume object and then we'll go into the volume object and copy the density channel and we'll paste that into the scatter channel so that gives us some scattering material and some absorption. So you can see straight away we can see the smoke so let's just give our light a bit more strength So we can see it a bit better and we'll change the mode to buckets. So let's go back to the material and we'll get copy the fuel channel from the volume object, put that into the emission channel and you can see now we're getting our fire as well. So the other thing, the only other thing we really need to do is we can drop the coefficient from the absorption to get more light scattering in there and then put a nice gradient into the fire channel just so we get some nice looking flames. So that's how to do redshift and octane using the VBD export from Explosure Effects inside of X Particles 4.